This is a case of a 66 years old female who in 2016 presented with severe symptomatic aortic stenosis due to an underlying bicuspid aortic valve disease. At that time, locally, she received a 23 millimeter bioprosthetic AVR as well as an ascending aortic graft replacement. She did well for a couple of years, but then come back in 2019 with chills, rigors, and weight loss. Blood cultures was performed locally, which is positive for a strep mitis. An echo was performed um, as part of the evaluation, which shows about one centimeter vegetations on the mater valve um, with mild mater regurgitations. Aortic prosthesis was thickened with trivial prosthetic regurgitation. There are no evidence of root abscess, and at that time, the left ventricular size is normal with a preserved ejection fraction of 55%. Therefore, the decision was made to treat her medically with eight weeks IV antibiotic therapy. About a month following completion of antibiotic therapy, um, she comes back for the follow-up echoes, um, which images I'm gonna share with you this morning. I'm gonna ask you a question based on these images. So I want you to take a look at this. This is the parastinal long axis views of the heart. And this is the parastinal long axis view zoom of the aortic valve of the aortic prosthesis. Then I'm gonna put some colors on it. And this is what I see. There's a lot of colors. And this is the short axis views of the prosthesis. And note that the patient's blood pressures at the corner uh, top of the screen. With that, my questions to you is that what is the primary mechanism of this patient's aortic regurgitation? Can I get your clickers out? Can you please vote for me? Is this prosthetic regurgitation or is it periprosthetic regurgitations? Please vote. Outstanding. I'm very glad to see that most of you agree that this is a periprosthetic regurgitation. Now, because there's a concern about endocarditis and why is these patients now having periprosthetic regurgitation, these patients underwent a TEE. And the image from the TEE is shown right here. Once again, there is a lot of color. It's everywhere in the outflow tract. So then the questions to you as the imager, what is the primary mechanism of this patient's aortic regurgitation? Is it prosthetic? Is it still periprosthetic? Is it both? Or you're not sure anymore? Great, this is exactly what I want to see. So there's a split here, and people's basically starting to sway around from just periprosthetic. Now, this essentially highlights the difficulty of assessing aortic regurgitation in the context of aortic prosthesis. It is important that you don't just concentrate on how severe this regurgitation is, but also to define the mechanism as well as to localize the jet. In fact, for assessment of aortic prosthesis, the NFAS view of the aortic prosthesis becomes the most important imaging uh, that you need to do in order to identify where the jet exactly is coming from, as illustrated on this diagram. On the left-hand side is the side, is side view of an aortic prosthesis within the LVOT. When you put a color on it, you can think that the color of the regurgitation jet comes from within the valve stand, i.e. within the prosthesis itself. But you cannot just rely on the long axis view to identify the jet location. You really need to see the short axis view of the aortic valve because depending on where the regurgitation jet, you could be right, it could be within the prosthesis. However, don't forget that jet that's either on the lateral or the medial side of the prosthesis that located in the same area on the long axis view can actually look exactly the same. So unless you see the valve on the short axis view, it is pretty much impossible in the context of prosthesis to know are we dealing with prosthetic or periprosthetic regurgitation. So make sure you rely on your, uh, go to your short axis view, get a good image and to actually define that. And this is very important because management um, is dictated by the locations. This is exactly what we do in this particular case. So we actually obtain additional images, went to a short axis view of the prosthesis itself, 
And then as you can see, there is a lot of regurgitation coming outside of the ring, anteriorly on the ant um, anteromedial side of the prosthesis that hitting uh, the, um, the posterior surface, uh, posterior annulus, and its place. And then um, Dr. Connolly taught me when I was a fellow uh, in the operating theater, one way for us to actually be sure about how to do this is that there's two methods. If, um, if your machine is capable of doing an X-plane, then that's a great thing to do. You put your X-plane uh, uh, by mode imaging and, actually, uh, um, and then actually move it from one plane across to the other. But then the other te technique that you, you can also do if you don't have a biplane imaging is to do what I call the push and pull mechanism within the LVOT. So what you do is that uh, you push, uh, you get a short axis uh, view, push really deep into the LVOT until you lose completely the aortic valve valvular plane and actually integrate the regurgitation such as in this, uh, in this plane. In this particular view, it shows nicely that the, uh, the regurgitation comes um, outside of the ring. And then you pull back slightly, it's just a few millimeters um, um, inside towards the leaflet, and this is the image that you're gonna see, that you're gonna lose that periprosthetic regurgitation jet, you still see a lot of colors within the, the LVOT, and you push, uh, pull back a little bit more until you actually get to, into the true leaflets, and this time you see all the three leaflets, and you can see that in fact, there is nothing comes out from the leaflet itself, and therefore what we're really dealing with is just purely a periprosthetic regurgitation that's placed within the LVOT and splash everywhere um, that actually looks as if you actually have a concomitant prosthetic regurgitation. Once again, so this is a very important technique. So the next question is, as I mentioned, um, how severe is this? You know, aortic regurgitation uh, is a funny thing because it's one of the regurgitations that you don't really need color uh, to actually define severity as shown in this. Um, I've shown this picture before. This is the personal long axis of the heart. As you can see, the left ventricle now is dilated. The function is lower, so the aortic regurgitation is significant, but also noted that the anterior mitral leaflet no longer opens normally. It seems to be restricted because the, anterior, uh, because the eccentric periprosthetic regurgitation jet hits directly into the anterior leaflet, and if you listen to the heart, you're probably going to hear an Austin Flynn murmur. And then this is the AR um, 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 CW Doppler that basically shows the patient has very short uh, pressure half time across the aortic regurgitation. And um, there is also a holodiastolic reversal on abdominal aorta PW Doppler. And then, and most importantly, as already showed before, the diastolic blood pressure is relatively low. There is a white pulse pressure. And just with this alone, even without knowing the, the color, what the color shows, you can actually also already conclude that the patient most likely have a severe aortic regurgitation. Um, quantitation of aortic regurgitation will be di discussed in the following, uh, in the subsequent session, so I will not discuss it now, but I would like to refer you to these guidelines that nicely um, document how you could do so. So just coming back to the case, uh, regarding the case conclusion, this patient ended up because of worsening um, um, uh, uh, LV performance as well as history of uh, endocarditis, he ended up undergoing a redo aortic valve replacement with a 90 millimeter carbomedics prosthesis and the mitral valve was repaired. But there's a twist to this case and the reason why I'm presenting this to you this morning is the question is that I haven't tell you what is the mechanism of the aortic periprosthetic regurgitation itself. So as part of the clinical evaluation prior to surgery, this patient underwent a chest x-ray um, you probably can, um, you know, uh, it probably doesn't look very significant, upper normal cardiac chamber size, maybe just early pulmonary venous congestion. But a very astute radiologist noted that if you zoom into lateral heart border, there is this actually a like man-made artifact at the lateral uh, heart border size. And then so this patient uh, went to undergo a CT, and this is confirmed on the CT that um, on the one of the coronary vessels, there is then this man-made object that can be seen. So the, uh, the rendering of that um, CT imaging was performed, which basically shows that um, metallic man-made object was found in one of the branch vessels of the left syncoflex artery. And when you look at very closely at the aortic prosthesis itself, you can see that, that um, the same man-made object are actually spaced on the, at the regular interval across the entire prosthesis but there is a gap in one of them at the anterior aspect of the prosthesis, and I suspect that's where um, that, uh, that metal object should have uh, been placed at. 
So Dr. Shaf actually operate on this patient, um, and this is the prosthesis that Dr. Shaf shell out from the patient. As you can see, these man-made objects are, uh, can be found all uh, around the prosthesis, apart at the anterior aspect of the prosthesis. And he was able to palpate across the heart, uh, uh, um, like uh, there is a sharp knot on the branch vessel of the circumflex, and he's able to milk out this metal object that is uh, essentially a core knot. So what is a core knot? Uh, I want to let you know this is essentially an automated uh, titanium fastener that is becoming uh, increasingly used in, in valvular surgery, especially in minimally invasive surgery, in order to replace the, uh, the manual hand tying by the surgeon so that we can reduce the cardiopulmonary bypass time. But do note that there's a number of papers in the literature that has actually shown if the position of the core knot is actually placed inappropriately, it actually can cause frictions um, as it produces, it can actually cause frictions to the leaflet. And when it happens, you can actually have perforation of the leaflet prosthesis, resulting in significant prosthetic regurgitation. But in our case, uh, the core knot, I presume, because of the endocarditis, uh, tissue was inflamed, things become loose and essentially embolized and causing periprosthetic regurgitations. So the tech home points that I would like you to take from this talk is that number one, it's very important for you to be able to identify not just the severity, but also the mechanism and the location of the aortic regurgitation jet origin, because it does impact it in your management. Um, comprehensive integrated aortic regurgitation assessment is needed that uh, recognize that automatic suturing devices are increasingly popular tool that clips uh, may, may damage prosthetic leaflets if it is inappropriately orientated, and displaced clips can also cause periprosthetic regurgitation and cause systemic embolization.